Hello and welcome to Mellow Labs. On today's episode, I want to show you how you can automate almost anything in your household using two very simple circuits. In front of me, I have two humidifier modules and they both do more or less the same thing, but they work very differently. And hopefully by the process of me automating these, you'll learn how you can automate things yourself. First of all, let's automate this one. This one is the simpler of the two because it only requires a power connection and it immediately starts working. So to automate this, we want to be able to turn the power on and off. We could use something like a relay, but relays are big and bulky. Is there something smaller that we could use that works basically like a relay? The answer is yes, MOSFETs. I'm going to turn this off before my desk gets all wet. These are N2 7000 MOSFETs. They're basically like little relays, but a lot smaller and a lot cheaper. You can get 10 of these for about three pounds shipped. Well, at least that's what I got them for. You can probably get them a lot cheaper on AliExpress. By the way, these are in exactly the same package as PNP and NPN transistors, but they don't serve nearly the same purpose. Uh, in unrelated news, I now have a whole bunch of PNP and NPN transistors that I have no idea what to do with, so I would appreciate your project ideas down below the like and subscribe button. Let me set one of these guys up on a breadboard and show you how it works. And there it is, it's actually a very simple circuit. Unfortunately, breadboards have a way of making simple things look very complicated, which is why, after you're done prototyping, you should consider making a PCB with today's sponsor, JLC PCB. With 19 years of experience and five state-of-the-art factories, it's no wonder that over 5.4 million engineers across 180 plus countries rely on their reliable and affordable services. Getting started is easy. Simply upload your Gerber files, get an instant quote, and place your order within minutes. It's just that easy. Whether you're prototyping or producing in volume, JLC PCB offers unbeatable pricing with one to eight layer PCB starting from just $2. But it's not just affordability. JLC PCB delivers premium quality with lightning turnaround times. Your boards can be ready within as little as 24 hours. All thanks to their fully in-house production process, which ensures quality control at every stage. And right now, there's an exclusive offer where you can get six layer PCBs for just $5 with $30 off of your first order. If you're ready to take your electronic projects to the next level, visit JLC PCB. The way I have this connected is really very simple. The ESP32 here isn't actually running any code, it's just a glorified voltage regulator so I can have a 3.3 volt output. I'm using the 5 volt to go into the humidifier module and then the ground from the humidifier module goes into the MOSFET and then the last pin from the MOSFET goes to the ground of the ESP32 which leaves us with the middle pin of the MOSFET which is kind of like our signal pin and currently it's connected to ground and if I disconnect it, um, it kind of goes into a float state and it lets a little bit of power through. I can plug it into the 3.3 volt which will let through all of the power. So now we can turn it on and off by connecting it to either 3.3 volts or the ground pin, which means we could easily control this with a GPIO pin. If you don't like the fact that the MOSFET sends power through when it's in the float state, you can add a pull down resistor on the signal pin and the ground, this is a 10k resistor, which completely stops it from doing that and then all you can do is plug it into 3.3 volts and it will start working again. I uploaded the example blink sketch but I replaced the LED GPIO with GPIO7 and now it turns the humidifier on and off. So that's how we automate one of these guys, let's move on to the other one. So the way this one works is when you plug it in, it doesn't do anything until you press the start button, at which point they all go off at the same time. And then we have like a little animated mode when you press the second button once and it just goes three at a time and you can press it again and it will turn on one and then it just keeps adding more every time you press it until it loops back to the little animated mode like that and you can just turn it off. So to automate this, we obviously want something that will push the buttons for us. We could put a little servo on top here that would just press the buttons for us, but servos are loud, annoying and cumbersome to set up. So instead, I want to use something called an octocoupler. Now, they look like this and I don't actually have one myself because I'm very confident in being able to make my own one. And that's because an octocoupler is just an LED and a photoresistor glued together. So we can actually automate this 
way easier than you expect. Let's solder this to where the button goes first. So now we should be able to turn it on and off simply by blocking the light and showing it the light and the same to turn it off. So now I can put this little LED on top of the photoresistor, have a microcontroller turn it on and off, which will in turn turn on and off the humidifiers. And I can do the same thing on the second button and I'm just gonna wire this up and show you. And here we are, I've got a photoresistor on each button with an LED on top of the photoresistor. These two are super glued together, which I don't really recommend. There's nothing stopping light from like leaking in. So if there's a specific sun ray hitting it and you like walk past, it will turn the unit on. What I would recommend is doing what I did here, which is just wrapping it in some electrical tape, or you could 3D print a fancy enclosure and stuff like that. But these are just the ways I've decided to do them. So now I've got the LEDs connected to the microphone controller with a very simple script that will first flush this LED which will turn the unit on and then flush this LED between one to four times so it will just select a random mode it will leave that on for about three seconds and then it will flash the off LED turning it off and starting the cycle again so let's power this up and hope it works oh it didn't work why didn't it work is there too much light There we go. Okay, so it's just too much light. Let me put some tape around that and try again. It works! And it selects a random mode, which I think at this point was just one, and then it turns it off. Perfect. Now, the one real downside with this is that you don't get any feedback to tell the microcontroller that it's actually working the way it's supposed to. Uh, you could put like a photoresistor on one of these uh, little LEDs that turn on when the unit is on and then just have that going into the microcontroller to tell it that it's on. But for the most part, it works exactly as we need it to work. So if you enjoy this episode, you the buttons still work, hooray. Um, so if you enjoy this episode, please consider subscribing, liking and doing all the things that appease the algorithm. Or if you have any more ideas for how you can automate simple things, do let me know down below and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. You're no longer pointing your toes. <laughs>